Hey, this is Heather Christie. Thanks for tuning in. I, um, I just got off of a virtual training session with a group of really successful financial advisors. And during the session, one of the things that we were talking about is the effective use of technology. And I put together a polling question where I asked how often these professionals are using face-to-face uh, -face video technology, working with their prospects and their clients. And I was surprised to learn that the breakdown was about 50-50. So about 50% were mostly using it or almost always using it. And the other half were rarely or only sometimes using it. And so I thought that was interesting. Now, this is a, this is a group of advisors who are arguably among the best in the country within their organization. Um, and I shouldn't say arguably, they are statistically the best in the nation. And, um, and, and I thought, well, if, if they are doing as well as they're doing, and only about half of them have really adopted and embraced video conferencing as part of their activity, what would it be like if we could take that to the next level? So the first thing that we know we have to do is we have to uncover what the reasons are behind their unwillingness or their, you know, just the fact that they're not using that video conferencing as much. Um, we've got to really understand the benefits of using video conferencing. But what's, what we talked about in this session was the fact that, you know, the first question is, how often are you using this, right? So you just got to ask yourself, there are some things that you know you should be doing. So whether it's video conferencing for you or whatever it is, what are the two things you know that you should be doing that would really help you to improve in your current role, improve your productivity, improve your success, improve your happiness, you can ask that question in a lot of different ways. What should you be doing? And the answer is we all know what we should be doing. And the use of video technology was one of the responses that came up that's something they should be doing, having more meetings. Um, so we got to get clear on that first. Then we ask the question, so why aren't you? Why aren't you doing what you know you should be doing? This would be a great moment to pause and ask yourself that same question. You've got something you know you should be doing write down and literally write it down is the best way you can possibly do this. Write down why you aren't currently doing what you know you should be doing. Once you've written that down, you have just uncovered your belief system, right? And your belief system controls your world. It's really interesting that whatever you wrote down is absolutely the truth for you. It is true for you and it's very, very real. And I would never dispute that for you. And yet I want you to ask yourself the question, but is it the truth? And there's a big distinction there. So being true for you and being the truth are two different things. And let me give you an example. As I said, in my polling, it came out about 50-50. People were using video conferencing and people were not using video conferencing. Everyone who was not consistently using video conferencing had really good reasons why they weren't. And those reasons were valid and they were true for each of the individuals who had the reasons. And yet when you ask the question, but is it the truth? That's when you really have to pause and say, well, maybe not. Because if there are 50% of advisors who work in my same profession, in my same territory, same process, same sales system, same everything, if they're doing it and I'm not, then maybe it's not the truth. Let me give you a perfect example of when this showed up in my world for the first time where it literally just hit me like a ton of bricks. I was out watching the Chicago Marathon. It was back in 2001. I'm watching the Chicago Marathon as I did each year because I lived like two blocks away from the marathon route. And I went up to Seattle's Best Coffee and I got myself a little mocha latte um, and I stood there and I watched the Chicago Marathon. Now, this particular year was a very special year because Paul and his sister Kimberly happened to be running in that Chicago Marathon that year. So I actually not only had my mocha latte, but I had a big sign, you know, congratulating them on their marathon. Well, as I am standing and watching and just feeling incredibly inspired, I mean, that Watching people do to me, which was the impossible, which is run a marathon, was beyond inspiring for me. Like I got choked up constantly, especially as I'm watching the different people run by and knowing what some of them had to overcome to be doing that marathon. And 
I was sitting there in the moment and I caught myself thinking to myself, I could never do this. Now, the only reason I even caught myself actually with my belief system in tow was because literally in the moment that I was saying I could never do this and feeling inspired by all those who could, I then see a gentleman run by with a prosthetic leg. And by the way, he was ahead of Paul and Kimberly and they ran at a good clip. When I saw this gentleman run by with one leg and one prosthetic leg, I thought, oh, good Lord. I, I literally am standing on the sideline saying I could never do this. I need to check that. The truth is I have not made this a priority and I just haven't even considered it. And so it was so amazing to have that realization in that moment. It's not that I can't, it's that I haven't. It's that I won't unless I decide to. And so the only thing that was true about my, uh, my reality in that moment was it was not a priority for me. And that's why I couldn't. So next time you have something that you know that you should be doing, something that would elevate you professionally, personally, elevate your happiness, elevate your success, elevate your wealth, any of those things. Ask yourself the question, excuse me, why am I not doing it? And whatever that answer is, I want you to check the answer because yes, it's true for you, but is it the truth? What's another option? And then of course, the next step is, so how can I? Now to finish up my story, to be very clear, I did not sign up to run a marathon in 2001 once I had that realization. I sat with it for nine years until finally in 2010, I took it on. And I took it on specifically for the purpose of proving to myself that I could, and I did, and it was painful, but I got through it. That was a, that was a one and done, but I'm telling you, if you ever saw me run, you'd say, if she could do it, I could do it. You can do anything set your mind to it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you liked it, if you know someone who needs to hear it, please share it. And as always, you can tune into and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see all prior Evolve to Win shows. Take care. Have a great day.